17 millimeter socket, remove the tire. Thirty-two millimeter socket. We're going to remove the axle lock nut. Seventeen millimeter socket. Take the caliper bracket bolt from the knuckle off. Break it free. Then I take a caliper bracket, it's a little hook, just pull the caliper right off the rotor, and then I'm just going to hook this right through and hang it up on the strut. Now I'm going to remove the rotor, I'm going to set that aside. So make sure you can push the axle out as much as possible, 14 millimeter socket. I'm going to do it by hand because I don't want to strip it with an air gun. Once I get that socket seated, I'll get my half inch. Once you break them free, you can switch over to a 3 8 drive. They'll come right out. Do this to all four. So now we're going to put the socket on the top one, a little extension, slide it through. Once it grabs, break it free. Now you can remove the bolts. Nineteen millimeter socket, and we're going to remove the top nut for the outer turret end. Now with a hammer, you're going to hit the knuckle part that the ball joint goes up in, so we can pop it right out. Now you can turn the whole suspension to easily get at those two inner bolts for the hub. Now that all the bolts are out, you're just going to hit the actual hub on the outside back and forth until it breaks free from the knuckle. Actually, we're going to put the castle nut back on, on the axle spindle just to stop that from dropping and hitting the ground. Now with that, take the, the nut off, pull that right out. So before you install the new wheel there, you want to take a nice wire brush or sandpaper, and you want to get all the surface rust off. Make it as clean as possible. Now you can spray it with some parts cleaner, get all that rust out of there. Let it dry. Once it's dry, you can, I like to spray it with some copper never sees just to um, help the next time. Now I'm just going to spray inside there, right where that hub meets the metal. And as you can see, it's kind of one way only install. You've got the wider bolt holes on the bottom of the knuckle. Same with the backing plate. Put that on so it matches up. I know this one's kind of old and rusted, but uh, Sure, at this age, it's pretty normal. And you're just going to slide it right on that spindle. The plate might move a little bit, no big deal. I'm going to push the axle nut out just a here a little bit so I can get the nut on there to start it. So now I can take one of my mounting bolts slide it through the back there and at least try to get it started. Once I get all four started thread-wise, we'll go ahead and tighten up. So I've got all four of the hub bolts started and I'm just using a 3 8 ratchet to bottom them out and I'm going to go in an even crisscross pattern because I don't want this hub to be um, not seated correctly. So that way I can Make sure that they're all not cross-threaded.
Now I've got all the bolts just hand tight. I'm going to use my torque wrench, 14 millimeter socket, and the torque is 48 foot pounds. I'm going to go in a crisscross pattern so I know it's seated correctly. and then just double check. So now we're gonna put the auto tie rod in back into the knuckle. Seat that all the way up, and then take the nut, the blue Teflon on the top, stack that by hand. That's a 19 millimeter socket. We're going to just bottom it out, then torque it to specs. So just bottom that up and then torque it to 20 foot-pounds. Now I'm going to put the new CV axle spindle nut on. I'm not going to torque it till I put it down on the ground. Now we can put the rotor back on. You can use uh, two lug nuts to hold that in place if you wish to, or you can just hold it, but I don't like to fight with things, so I'm going to go like that. Because once you put the slug nut on, you can also spin it before you get it all together and see if your backing plate is hitting the rotor. And it is. That's that magical sound. So just pry it back a little. Oh, quiet. There you go. So now we can take our caliper down and line up bracket with the pads. Get the mounting bolts. Make sure you start them by hand. There you go. These are going to be a 17 millimeter socket. I'm going to bottom them out, then I'll torque them to factory specs. So this vehicle has two torque specs for the caliper bracket to knuckle bolts. If the bolts are a floating washer, then it's 59 foot-pounds. If the bracket bolt is what they call a flange bolt, like this, it comes with a flange on it, it is 88.5. So it differentiates between the two type of bolts. So if you have the one with the floating washer, 59 foot-pounds, the preset part of the nut on the bolt it is 88.5 foot pounds. So now we can put it back in the bracket. 17 millimeter socket. We're going to snug it up and torque it. So 88.5 foot pounds. So the spindle nut is a 32 millimeter socket. I'm going to just snug it. Do not over tighten it because we're going to torque it to 162 foot pounds. So it's snug. Now before I install the tire, I'm going to take the center cap out. And now I can install the tire and put the socket through there and easily torque that spindle nut. Now I'm going to put the tire on. Put all five lug nuts on. Just snug it up to 
snug them up. I'm going to lower the vehicle down. 32 millimeter socket and 162 foot pounds. Now at this point, you can take the wheel back off if you can't get in there. You could torque it without putting the wheel on, but I personally like the new lug nuts and I don't want to strip them with a pry bar going onto the floor and holding that axle from spinning. So sometimes you can get, get away with this, but you have to pinch that lock bolt in. Nineteen millimeter, and it is eighty-eight point five is the torque for this. And you're going to go in a crisscross pattern. Then double check. Don't forget your center cap. 